But hey, what's up, guys? I'm here with Cycles and Lazy Kage. We're doing something different today. We're doing a podcast. You know, usually I'll probably make five minute videos or probably 10 minute videos, but today it's probably going to be like an hour long. So I'm here with two of my good friends, Cycles, Lazy Kage. Say what's up, guys. Hey. Hello. What's up? Hello. What's good, people? <laughs> so we're going to be talking about multiple topics today, and it's probably going to be laid out in front of you right now. So the first topic we're going to be talking about is Lazy Kage. I mean, you guys probably don't know who he is. He's he's a small board to a YouTuber. He also he talks a lot about Dragon Ball Super as well. Sometimes he posts My Hero Academia. Matter of fact, Lazy Kage, tell us about your channel. Uh, so basically, about a year ago, I watched a YouTuber named Swe Kage, and I really liked what he was doing with Naruto videos. And I was like, uh, maybe I can do the same. And I kind of started doing what he did. So I changed my content lately, and now I do like uh, anime-related things, and it's pretty fun. I have a lot of friends in this community, and it's quite fun to be honest. So uh, that's pretty uh, much it. And your name—it's pretty much inspired by Swe Kage, right? Yes. Oh, that's cool. Um, one thing I want to ask you, what is your favorite type of videos to make? Because, of course, as a content creator, you probably have some videos that you like making and some videos that you don't really like making. What is your favorite type of video to make? I mean, if I'm completely honest, uh, something like whatever you want, like that's probably the answer, like the right one, whatever you want. Like you can just wake up and be like, today I'm going to do a vlog and the next morning today I'm going to do whatever. Like you get what I mean? all right that's cool like any questions for lazy video. kage cycles so what would be your like your your main thing for people to come to because like um when you have a fan base right they subscribe to you for a certain thing yeah, yeah I get and, you. Uh, there's like one key thing that they always come back for and then any other yeah. thing would be them coming back and forth whenever they feel like okay i want to watch this so what's your main thing yeah so basically uh, i have thought about this a lot i never wanted to do a specific thing and to be known for that specific things like to blow up for one thing and then when that when uh, that specific thing dies and my channel dies with it i never wanted to do that so basically in a way or another if you like shonen jump anime specifically naruto boruto now my hero academia dragon ball super or whatever you can subscribe to my channel i'm sure that barabi will have leave it in the description below and of course yes so basically i uh, cover some things that we all know them but uh, after all some of you guys are not really into anime or you're not actually as nerdy as we are like anime tubers so i cover like the most recent facts reviews spoilers and every good things that you can get one question i have to ask you what is yeah. your top five anime um favorite anime or best anime you ever seen Give me five anime that you feel is your your favorite, your personal favorite, and you have okay. to rank it from five to one. Okay, number one is of course um, the OG Naruto Naruto Shippuden. Uh, okay. Number two is probably Hunter Hunter or Hunter X Hunter, however you want to say it. Uh, yeah. Number three is Death Note. It's a very it's a great anime. Number uh, four is probably My Hero Academia. It's really high on my list nowadays. And number five, uh, I guess. Uh, uh dragon ball dragon ball z and dragon ball super as a franchise in a whole okay that's interesting that's interesting true <laughs> okay um let's go on to the um what the podcast is about and it's just us talking about random st random stuff because um we don't just want to be talking about boruto all the time yeah, yeah we want to expand and talk about other things to make the channel you know stand out whoever's channel this yeah. is uploaded on yeah, yeah. to stand out um so people can actually see that we like other things except from that one thing that we always talk about or our channel is mostly based on so um right now uh we have the first thing which is a recommended anime okay yeah so that's basically when you guys you know talk about anime that you have recently watched and would recommend so i watched a couple i watched my hero academia i watched the first season of that and i also watched death note i didn't finish death note i'm probably on like episode 30 of death note it's almost to the end but uh th those are the only two i've really watched since then okay so what do you think of my hero academia i liked it the thing about my hero academia is i feel like a lot of people like hype my hero academia up but to be honest i only watched the first season i don't really i haven't really dived into all of my hero academia but i really liked it i just don't think it's better than naruto a lot of people say it's better than naruto naruto shippuden i don't think so but 
I really liked it. I think it has a lot of potential as far as me going forward and looking at more of the episodes in the future. You know, the yeah. author um, for My Hero Academia, I think, said Naruto is the best manga out there. I mean, you can barely yeah. see that it's inspired from Naruto. Like, everything, yeah. like, it's kind of inspired. Yeah, I kind of get that feel. The thing I like about My Hero is um, it takes the one cliche or the one thing that has been done to death which is high school anime it takes a western concept and adds yeah, it yeah. to I get you. a concept which is high school that has been done to death and breathes basically fresh air into that category kind of thing because most of the high school anime out there these days are extremely boring so um i think that's what my hero academia does really good you know what i'm saying um yeah yeah, yeah i agree with you so I that's agree. that's what i liked about the anime um yeah. what i dislike about it right which is one thing is that because they are in high school and they are surrounded by the strongest people um the strongest heroes they are basically um, protected so there is barely any sense of danger when i'm watching it and that kind of spoils it um for me because uh um, okay. you know why should you be um scared if the best hero in the entire world is like not far from you you know what i'm saying it's just a phone call away <laughs> so you kind of have some parallels yeah, to naruto yeah. and my hero academia right there right mm, naruto yeah. being the strongest person in the corner huh yeah exactly that's that's um another problem with boruto as well naruto's there and he has a protective layer so um as long as that is there it's really isn't exciting even even though you know boruto's not gonna die because he's the main character um there should be some sense of danger something there to keep you on your definitely and all that kind of stuff but it's not i agree yeah. okay so um anyone watched any other anime except for um anime? i have three uh animes to recommend and um uh, basically they are like animes like casual animes um uh, that if you are like an anime fan you will like start to love anime even more than you do okay uh so uh, i think that this anime got like a lot of people into anime in the first place mm -hmm. and it's one punch man i don't know if you guys have seen it it's just 12 episodes anime it's a really entertaining slash funny slash uh whatever anime fighting anime it's really really good in my opinion and uh, like it's for anime uh, viewers that not actually as much into anime and you will really love it in the first look and it's pretty fun if you haven't seen it the second anime that i will suggest is death note i know that a lot of you guys probably have seen it and bara uh, said that he has started to watch it and it's very great it's not the casual anime that you expect to watch but it is like very deep plot story and characters are like very well progressed and everything and the last anime I, it's an actual anime movie i don't think a lot of you will like this but it's a specific uh, group of people it's called koe no katachi or a silent voice i, I a lot of people haven't seen this uh, movie but oh, it's wait you have mm -hmm. i haven't <laughs> uh, it's really great in my opinion i think it covers some uh, topics that a lot of people like ignore or don't like to talk about it because they are like controversial and stuff and i, think it I, really I, good. I, I like it it's like about suicide social anxiety friendships and things like that okay um what i would recommend right um i wouldn't say it's good right but it's all right most of the seasonal animes are right it's called yeah. um darling in the franks right um i never heard of it oh okay me so, either okay <laughs> so basically um it's got a lot, a lot of um sexual symbolism in there right but aside from that okay um the story is mysterious because it's a bunch of people who have been you know born and put into this this um program to control robots so basically they grow in a certain mm -hmm. environment uh, environment which is um monitored and then they um end up growing up to a certain age to where they can actually pilot um a few robots it's like pacific rim right i'm sure you guys have watched pacific rim right and uh, not really no, oh, no. Okay, wow. Oh, wow okay so basically <laughs> they have big me mechanical robots right which they yeah. pilot and each robot requires two people because one person's brain is not good enough to pilot a robot by themselves so they need two people right so okay. that's, that's basically how pacific rim works now in this show what happens is they need a male and a female right and mm -hmm. um based on the story i think it's um to find out whether you have a compatible partner 
to ride in a robot i think you need to be sexually attracted to your partner in some kind of way to make sure that works so that's a whole I sexual see. symbolism thing they're going but aside from that the reason why i'm watching this anime is because it captures my um it, it captures my curiosity it, it makes me curious why are these people there why are they isolated from the rest of the world and you know where are the rest of the humans and all that kind of stuff like that that makes me question the show yeah, yeah. it makes me you know watch another episode and another episode and all that kind of stuff um except from that there is nothing else that i can recommend because i barely watch anime and i barely even have to, have to watch <laughs> that's great bro like <laughs> The explainer you did, I really like it. Oh, I, yeah, mean, I, yeah. I might check it out. Yeah, I don't really watch a lot of anime, so I really can't recommend a lot of anime. I'm pretty sure all of you guys know that. That's pretty old. That's watching this video. I was kind of talked to Cycles about this the other time or the other day. The other animes that I only watch is Pokemon and Yu Gi Oh! The regulars, like the hype beast anime yeah. that I'm pretty yeah. sure everybody watched. <laughs> all I'll say is, right, um, the mistake that I made personally, um, I think it's a mistake, is that. When I watched the anime, right, a certain anime, yeah. I thought this was good. That actually made me think, is there more out there? So I went and just dived into a whole pile of anime, right? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I was met with disappointment because yeah. I kept seeing, like I'm a person, I pay attention to a lot of detail. So yeah, um, yeah. I kept seeing the same we characters reskinned in different stories, you know what I'm saying? And then, you know, I saw a lot of repetition. And me not liking repetition, I started figuring out that there is not a lot of great anime out there, you know. Like, say for example, when we get seasonal anime, right? A lot of them are just reskins of things that have been done in the past with characters with the same, you know, personalities and all, all that kind of stuff. Um, it's yeah. only like one or two anime that, you know, stands out and even that is not fully um, original, you know what I'm saying? Like there was an interview with, uh, I believe, Akira Toriyama where he said a lot of anime is coming out and, you know, we have a lot of talented people who can yeah, draw, yeah. but unfortunately not all of them are original with their stories kind of thing. So that is an issue out there and I think if this keeps, if this keeps going on, what's going to happen is that... You know, anime is just going to get uninteresting to the point where people are just going to want anything instead of, you know, quality. Because there's a lot True. of quantity, but not the quality. So if you're going to watch anime, yeah. just take recommendations. Cycles, have you ever seen Jojo's Bizarre Adventures? Um, I've seen like one episode. It was, um, as the title says, bizarre. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's one of the animes that once you get into it, like, I think that... Yeah, your life is pretty much into it like all i remember can't... is um i saw one episode and i think someone was in prison and then there was like a, a shadow behind him and then they used their shadows to fight or something like that like, could you give us a quick summary yeah so basically there, there's a guy called uh, yeah they are like eight parts i think eight parts like they are eight jojos and it's like uh jonathan i think that's the first jojo that we got introduced to the part one and so basically his father adopts another kid and his name is dio and dio basically wants to ruin his life so it's like naruto against sasuke thing but it's like in 1970s i i, I have no idea like it's like very very like classy like you know the, the animation on jojo's like it's like something else like the opening one like oh my god mind-blowing <laughs> all right cool i haven't cool. seen the entire anime so i i've seen like six episodes of part one so i i, I have like uh, still to watch a lot all right that's cool all right so the next topic is going to be the hardships of a content creator and that, it could really be anyone it doesn't necessarily have to be a board to a youtuber or just specifically yeah. an anime youtuber just any kind of content creator not not even necessarily youtube but yeah the process of creating content is kind of difficult uh, but expand on that lazy yeah, I, I think Cycles should go and take this one because he has like uh, his channel is like made before all of us. I think he's like the oldest. Yeah, true. Uh, okay, Cycles um, like the OG. <laughs> okay. Um, when it comes to difficulties and you know hardships, um, and this is mainly to the, the, the your subscribers and all that kind of stuff. Um, number one thing I'm going to talk about is the fact that fans tend to worship the YouTubers that they watch, right? Personally, I think that this mentality is not healthy 
because what people don't understand is that YouTubers are just normal people like them. It so happens that they find the time to actually record and create content and put it out there for people to enjoy. So um, we have this whole <laughs> thing of um, you know fans uh, worshiping their YouTubers to the point where they do whatever the YouTuber says, whether it's good for them or not, and you know the whole manipulation thing comes in, and then, you know drama comes in, and all that kind of stuff, and then. Basically, my uh, point it, is people are mm. behaving like sheep just because your YouTuber says something, they'll just do it without question. And Any yeah. specific YouTubers? Oh, no, no, no. No, no, we, we don't throw names. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, uh, no I'm, not talking, I'm not talking about any specific YouTuber. I'm just talking about... Oh, you know, yeah, in general. <laughs> Double for <YouTube>. anime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Oh, okay. My man's throwing yeah. names. Oh, okay, he knows. I'm, 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 I'm not joking, about, of course. I'm joking. I'm not talking about anyone. I'm just saying in general my experience on youtube has been that fans tend to worship people who are just normal pe people like say for example lazy kagi you look up to pewdiepie right yeah kind of yes I, I i think you can say that okay so if you look up to this guy um most of the time when I've, what i've seen um in his social media and all the news revolving around him is unacceptable like his behavior is out of control sometimes um he says things that will you know offend people he knows this but the thing is just because he has a lot of fans you know they defend a lot of the stuff that he says saying it's a joke or it's it's you know it's something that he said by mistake but you know sometimes people do say these things just yeah. to spark something just to get them I attention and, all, and that kind of stuff and the, these fans stuff, will just please. follow these these fans will just follow blindly without you know thinking whether it's morally good or wrong like it's like they don't have a brain of their own they just want someone to do or make the decisions for them and i think that um people need to stop um, yeah i, I kind of get where you're coming from i feel like it's two it's two times it's two certain fans you have fans that are just you know they, they support the end the content the content creator and then there's stands that just do whatever they want or do whatever they can for that certain content creator i feel like it's it could be a healthy medium if you're a fan but it's, if, it's, if you're like a stand it's kind of different the first instance with pewdiepie it kind of it was taken out of context a little bit with the jewish thing but the second one uh you really can't you can you really can't um defend that when he said the n-word on stream i know it probably just slipped out you know you're on stream things yeah, like yeah. that but yeah okay so basically the mm. hardships of a content creator in my opinion i think that this is like uh, uh for person to person changes personally mm -hmm. uh i personally don't make you do for money or fame or anything like that i just do it because i can do it and i do it because it's like fun right yeah um, I, I thought about it uh, if actually some things happens and like I become like real big and to make it a real job that'd be great after all but I really doubt it and even if it happens like you get what I mean it's like something that you think about it but you don't really know how it will go so yeah. in my opinion I think the biggest hardship on like for YouTube smaller YouTubers specifically is like getting inspired and getting depressed and again getting this uh, like inspired so i think i have like a really good friends like zone around me so a lot of people like correct me when i do something wrong like uh, for example cycles like um back in the day like when i just met him like about a year ago i think like he really was inspiration for me because uh, i was looking at him like from uh, from points uh, of like a very small youtuber like i had like 100 subs and he was like at 1000 and everything uh, he said i was like this is facts this this is actually the truth and he was like a really nice to me at the time and uh i guess like cycles is one of the big reasons that i still do youtube as i do and i have like friends like besides youtube like they are funny they keep me like inspired and stuff and uh, it's 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 a fun experience but you shouldn't really worry about like the dark side you really have to look at the bright side and you really have to have a lot of people to inspire you even if they are friends or other youtubers or whatever mm. That's all right my opinion, one question so. Very one question i have for lazy kage because yeah. lazy kage is a smaller youtuber he's not necessarily on the schools and a lot of fans out there or not, i wouldn't say fans a lot of viewers that watch our content they'd want to create youtube videos and i feel like you're probably closer to the smaller youtubers that you could probably relate to them yeah. even more so what is one thing that you could tell the people out there that haven't necessarily made a youtube video yet but want to create a youtube video what would you tell them? 
I mean, first of all, you have to know that it's not really easy, right? But when you uh, make a YouTube uh, video like the first ones, you're not gonna be good. And don't compare yourself to like your like the guy that you're getting inspired from. Like you will achieve his level in some time, right? Like in one year, you will become like better than him potentially. So try to do what you're doing, and it's all about the time. It's not about money or like buying a, like expensive shit or things like that. It's all about the time, right? You have to wait like a specific time, and you will learn about it. Like you will improve, not just as a YouTuber, but as a human of time like that's yeah. the biggest advice i can get all right okay that's cool and um for me my the thing i would say is my, was my biggest hardship the thing is um i put one is time management i don't really have like a lot of time especially because i'm in school and yeah. another thing is probably the place i could you know make my commentaries you guys probably didn't hear it but earlier in this podcast my cousin he's playing 2k yeah. like he just started screaming out of nowhere so to be honest you can relate because i have the same problem like um with my parents like they always try to in uh, like interrupt me always like i i always have to find like a corner or something to record my videos it's really annoying because sometimes yeah. when i really want to make a video but i can't because they are like uh my uncles at my house and uh, things like that and i really really want to do that video but i can't so i just like skip it over and do something with it like we yeah. can relate we can relate yeah I, and i feel like a lot of people have that problem especially starting out they don't know where to create their yeah. content in their house especially because a lot of people have noisy houses like me but i feel like if you have a, a good 10 minute window quiet room you should just do it there and like, everything will be cool just you just have to make time for it and don't go to the expensive stuff even if you're rich like you don't need to like a very big computer like whatever like uh you can do it like in a laptop or like bora b a lot of guys a lot of you guys probably don't know this but yeah. bora b actually edits his videos like in an ipad if yeah, that definitely. isn't like Once well, I heard I iPhones, oh wow this guy is <laughs> like, yeah. you're a harder worker than me yeah <laughs> thanks for the applause yeah but yeah if you could just put what you want in an actual video and have people see it and actually listen to you they'll know if you're really like, like good with youtube and they'll they'll just go towards your content to me it was never really hard for me to make videos mainly because i talk about this stuff a lot and especially because no one in my house watches board toy naruto i just i'm just like an outspoken guy i just talk a lot and yeah. me, even cycles me and cycles sometimes we sit on discord talk about for like three hours but we just talk so oh, okay so anyone got any more points because i do yeah, and oh. okay you can go you, you, you yeah can go. okay so um, turn up cycles <laughs> so um <laughs> the second point is basically like criticism right and i think everyone experiences this right and uh it's to do with um sometimes the s subscribers and sometimes it's got to do with the viewers right so um say for example as your as a reviewer right your job is to be unbiased as possible right and mm -hmm. um, to review the good and bad about certain things now the, th the thing is that sometimes people just don't want you to do your job and with your job i mean talking about the good and bad some people just don't want you to talk about a show's good side of things because they don't like the show and sometimes people just want you to talk about you know they don't want you to talk about the bad side of things like they'll say you're being too negative and all that kind of stuff but yeah. i think like subscribers and viewers need to understand that it is um the job of um reviewers review. to actually talk about the positives and negatives and um you know this is actually a major issue because um it all backfires right so say for example if i talk about you know something negative in boruto then people have um complaints in the comment section down below like yeah. i had a um i think it was a view i don't know if he, uh, the person subscribed to me right but they said that i've been recently very negative and it's like well the thing is if you really listen to my points i'm not lying kind of thing um i'm, yeah. just, I'm yeah. just talking about what i see i'm not being negative yeah. for no reason there's a reason why like say for example um boruto has like you know we are like 40 episodes in and we are still getting to the good part right yeah. people say i'm complaining too much but the thing is right um like i said in the previous podcast you only have a certain amount of time to make a good first impression 
and I feel like they are not doing that to Boruto because they rely on you know the, the fan base from Naruto to just jump straight on Boruto to improve the rating so they don't really have to make a good first impression because they already have fans from the previous show so by doing that they lengthened out the manga they lengthened out the you know the anime the episodes and all that kind of stuff and um, you know I like recommending anime to people you know that are next to me like say for example my brother or you know uh, a friend or yeah. something like that i cannot say okay watch this show but you know go through 40 episodes of boredom or something like that i cannot say that because they say 40 episodes i ain't got time to sit down and watch 40 episodes of boredom before it gets to the good part that kind of thing like i want to recommend the anime straight away without it having any problems but i feel like they are lengthening it out to the point where it's becoming too much like one thing that people dislike is filler okay and naruto was plagued with filler to the point where people stopped watching the anime entirely like you know um back in the days when naruto was still on i know people would make weekly reviews and all that kind of stuff of the anime and the manga but then it got to a point where the fillers got too much and i would never even see one review of the episodes of naruto you know what i'm saying because it's all filler and then yeah, all i would see is mad. just you know manga reviews that's and all that. I was like yeah it was really bad like the, the western audience i don't know about the japanese audience but the western audience did not like the fact that you know um there were a lot of filler episodes and it's gotten to the point where i think they are mixing filler with canon in boruto to make sure people cannot say it is necessarily filler so um <laughs> by doing that they are lengthening out the series and you know the tension and the the um the need to come and watch an episode every single day is not there and i'm not specifically just speaking for myself there have been a few subscribers that say you know what i don't even watch the episodes anymore i just come here to listen to your reviews because i want to <laughs> yeah like, it's yeah you i get it yeah, yeah, i had that too yeah, um, yeah. that's that's not a good look you know what i'm saying um yeah. and you know um when you talk about things like this right um some subscribers and some viewers just don't want to hear it because they think you're just talking negative but the thing is am i really lying if you really look at it they haven't even planned the beginning properly you know um mm. that is bad you yeah. don't you don't push out a product and say here buy it and then we ask you oh okay so what is you know the idea of the first page and you say i don't know that doesn't make sense you know what i'm saying as a writer <laughs> author whatever yeah. it is whether you're writing a book or not you know you need to know what your story is about you need to plan before you execute kind of thing and they are not doing that so if i mention that then apparently i'm being negative but you know eventually as time goes on right um the story will get better mm -hmm. i know that it will but um all i'm saying is the beginning was really really executed poorly and um you know yeah. people just don't want you to talk about it um all right. yeah the accuser of negativity uh, and all that kind of stuff like it's it's not negativity it's just us pointing out the the you know the obvious we are just yeah. the people who take the information given to us and then report it to you guys but then mm -hmm. you know we get criticized for being negative and giving our opinions we have to talk about it think about let me give you an example right um say for example harry potter is like how many um you know let's talk about the film right say for example the film is they have like eight parts right yeah okay eight so yeah. Eight seven parts. movies but uh, uh seven one like it's uh, cut to two parts so okay. technically mm -hmm. eight parts. okay yeah. cool so let's say it's eight parts okay so say for example harry potter's eight parts and then you know they decide let's add like an another you know 50 movies in between all these events <laughs> like would it still be exciting <laughs> yeah, like star wars yeah would it uh, really be I, exciting i never though? seen star wars i don't know true all right real, real quick i want to touch on something because cycles just said a lot give me one second i want to talk about the criticism part for a second then i'll mm -hmm. jump on to the part where cycles talking about board so specifically but yeah if someone criticizes you i know there's probably like a lot of smaller youtube smaller youtubers that especially that talk about board so that watches my my videos are probably watching this right now but if someone is criticizing you it's probably for the right thing i remember back when i first started my channel you guys probably don't know this but it was pretty terrible at making videos and the way i got better is one by making a lot more videos and two by taking a lot of criticism and trying to figure out how i can grow in that one of the most important criticism or one of the or one of the most of uh, i should say a lot of criticism i got about this was yep. i it, it, it was me probably it was me having a lot of pauses throughout all of my videos and it wouldn't be like regular pauses like the pauses i take right now when i'm speaking it'll probably be like long pauses when i'm trying to look at my notes and try to see oh what's the next topic that's when i started to that's when i started to edit my commentaries start to basically match all of the all of my voice 
clips together so it, it wouldn't be like a long pause things like that and also i had a lot of background stuff in my in my commentary so i decided to put music over it things like that and in turn yeah. made my con in turn made my content a lot better you know yeah that, but, uh, that's a classic but, one like yeah. uh the problem with for me was like uh, uh, at the start, like I didn't really know how to stop the recording and then start again. So when I was about to say something, I had the script like right before me, and I I was like just reading it and like not stopping in the video. Like get it? I just read it and put it in. Yeah. Well, in the first. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. that was pretty like interesting to say. Like it was like kind of like a podcast, like just me talking for five minutes <laughs> and then yeah. yeah. And uh, the editing was way harder because you didn't really have like any points. Like you, you just drag the pictures that the video or whatever. It was pretty hard. Mm -hmm. and I wanted to uh, uh, touch about the criticism thing that cycle said. Uh, if you are about mm -hmm. to start a YouTube channel, in my opinion, I think you're always gonna get that one guy that says like you have to stop, right? You will uh, always get like a uh, negative comments and criticism. It's all okay with me. It means a lot to be honest when you criticize my cha channel it, it literally gives me like more motivation to like improve myself right but when mm. you just say something like dumb and like just leave like just leave a dislike not even watch the video like uh, Sarada is the worst character oh yeah dislike you're the worst <laughs> Quit, comment, and <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I don't, I don't yeah. even, I don't look at the dislike button at all. Like, um, <laughs> there was a point where you yeah. um, said that um, a lot of people disliked one of my videos, and I didn't even notice because I don't really care about the dislike button because yeah. people just just click on it for any other reason. It might be because they're having a bad day, they didn't get no pussy or something, and then I can't get fucking. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Your voice annoys me because obviously I'm frustrated as fuck. You know what I'm saying? I got mm -hmm. some heavy blue balls or some shit, so fuck you and just hit the You know what's right crazy now. that a lot of people probably don't know? YouTube doesn't really look at if you get a certain amount yeah. of likes. If you're gonna give them a, a dislike rating or a like rating, it makes it means no difference. It's still gonna push that video even more in the algorithms. Yeah. That's, and the worst, it kinda the doesn't worst matter. Thing I ever uh, get with comments is like uh smaller YouTubers promoting their videos in the comments. Oh, and yeah. a lot of them <laughs> yeah, that happens to all of them. Like I used to do it in the first place, but now I stop because if I'm actually honest, like you won't get shit from that like two three yeah. subscriber max like you won't get like a lot of attention from that like you either yeah. have to get a good collab or like ju ju just grow like normally like like everyone does right but mm -hmm. in my opinion i think that uh the, the dumbest thing i ever gotten is like a guy tweeted at me was like hey bro why are you deleting my self promo comments but in fact i'm not deleting <laughs> that but it's like it's like uh uh censorship in him and like if I go to my uh, spam comments, I can literally send screenshots right now, like a guy saying, please watch my theory video about Boruto Sai. Guys, please watch this perfect theory about Boruto Sai. I get this a lot. Yeah, I get yeah, this a lot. The definitely. Most, uh, Baro, you, you were saying something about the criticism. Oh, I was pretty much done with the criticism. The next thing I was going to touch on was the part where you was talking about Boruto and how it's pretty much like all filler right now. Yeah. Or presumably all filler right now and me and cycles always have disagreements in terms of the overall series and how it could possibly improve but in terms of this right here like for example like the first 45 episodes or i'll probably make a review about the first 50 episodes i feel like the first 50 episodes of boruto you know presuming the next five episodes are going to be like the rest of the 45 episodes it was really weighed down by the movie of the tuning exam and i think cycles kind of agree. agrees with me yeah. yeah he agrees with this he agrees with me to a certain extent but the thing is if we didn't see the tuning no nah, matter of fact i'd like to say in a naruto perspective when you first see time where orochimaru was kind of fighting the third hokage and then we see naruto fighting gata we wouldn't care anything we wouldn't give two shits about haku and zawuza fighting kakashi like we yeah. wouldn't care about none of that the most impactful thing that we've seen was sasuke jumping in front of the haku that was direct at naruto and if we would have known that naruto and sasuke were not going to die we wouldn't care we'd just be like all right what is this filler why is this in yeah. front of us things like that so i feel like the movie really weighed down the overall effect of board so and i think the only thing that they, they really could have done in terms of spicing up the new the new anime is probably invite new forms and i think that's pretty much what dragon ball super is doing right now like giving us a whole bunch of new forms and if you guys think about it, the most interesting thing in boruto was boruto's idol jutsu mm -hmm. like no one really knew what it was we all thought it was going to be a byakugan and now we have this new idol jutsu which was like the big thing and that's again the only thing they could really do to to entertain us right now is tell us some stuff that we didn't see in the movie and the okay. arcs right now probably would have hit harder if we didn't see the if we didn't see the movie for example we would know 
if Sada was gonna survive the the mission in the mist mm-hmm. village and we did and I was talking to Cycles about this the other day, actually episode 45, and I was talking about Shikadai and how Shikadai yeah. was probably gonna die if he ended up fighting um was it Ryogi. Yeah. I thought to myself, yo, like yo, there's no yeah. way Shikadai could beat Ryogi. And then I thought to myself, but we've seen the movie already. Shikadai's not gonna die, so I yeah. so it's, it's right kinda took yeah. yeah. Like it's kinda yeah, took the everything way, out of it. For interrupting, like am I the only one that actually thinks that Shikadai might be better than Shikamaru as a character? I really That's like. I don't know for some reason. I it's like the right now the series like of Boruto, like the three last episodes uh, for me mm-hmm. at least they are like a nine out of ten. I don't know yeah. for some reason I really enjoy it. The, 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 the yeah. past few episodes have been actually good. Um, yeah. I think yeah, I think um, Shikara is actually more um, interesting than Shikamaru because with Shikamaru he was smart and. Uh, that's that's pretty much it that's all what? i got from yeah. the character like but the reason why i don't like shikadai is because uh, like tamari and shikamaru like they are like married and have a kid but uh, Sh- shikadai really hasn't got anything from tamari right like he's like just a copy of uh shikamaru. well well right. we don't know yet yeah I mean, he's still a kid <laughs> yeah that's debatable yeah. Well, yeah it's debatable the thing with shikadai is that they have introduced um this new struggle for him which is to find people which relate with them i mean that's what i got from the episodes so i think um if they give every character a struggle right that would be mm-hmm. good because then they would have something to work on as they progress um, with what you said about um, taking criticism that's fine I'm, I'm i'm open to take criticism right especially if it's con- constructive but yeah, um, the thing is that people are um are you know quick to accuse you of being negative like say for example i actually gave good reviews to the previous episodes of boruto but just because um i was i just said that the two main things that you know um popped up to me or you know stood out to me in the current episode of you know shikadai unmasking ryogi um is okay. basically the story ends shikadai just unmasking um you know ryogi and those are the two um things that were standing yeah. out to me kind of thing yeah I um you. yeah it's just just a backstory and um the unmasking and then someone said i was being negative because i after that i uploaded a video of dragon ball super and you know how it is in shambles but the thing is um yeah that video was great in my opinion that was one of the best videos you ever made well obviously I don't know a few of my questions in that video have been answered but the main point is i'm just trying to put these points out there for people to think about i'm not being negative on purpose if if a show always has bad writing and you keep mentioning the fact that they have bad writing people will label you as the (laughs) the bad person and the thing is this right because it's a problem and it's gotten to a point where a lot of reviewers these days are really being dishonest like they will only talk about the positive things and they will be they will be scared of their subscribers and you know their viewers because they've they've pinpointed them and said don't talk negative about our show or else we will dislike your video or we will do something to hurt your channel and it's gotten to the point where certain people have admitted fully that all they talk about is the positive stuff and not the negative stuff yeah. which means they are not doing their job as a reviewer and secondly mm-hmm. they're not being honest so i think you know people um pushing the reviewers to a certain corner saying just talk positively and not negatively kind of creates dishonest reviewers and then later on what's going to happen is it's going to backfire because if a a negative episode or a bad episode comes out the reviewer is going to be used to saying it's positive to the point where they're going to say it's positive and be dishonest and then the subscribers or the viewers who always want positivity are going to call the reviewer a fake reviewer because the review reviewers apparently not honest but then they remember in the first place they were the people that pushed the reviewer there and it's not happened to me because i'm not scared of my subscribers youtube is cycles you have to understand something like i know sorry for interruption again but you have to understand something like the boruto fandom is really sorry to say this guys not guys not all of you but some of you are quite immature and i i mean you can probably see where i'm coming from but a lot of people don't watch don't know like uh the writing stuff like they don't look at the writing they just see like oh my god sarada did like a cool jutsu this is a 10 out of 10 right so they don't really know like the things that like they are like underage and like immature and you know what i mean the dragon ball community is worse um yeah yeah dragon ball community, community, they will like, just flag your video the worst kind of stuff. yeah 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 i get it it's like the same thing i said earlier about people like for example viewers looking up to youtubers it's it's, it's a certain thing that's it's difference between fans and stands and stands 
of t in terms of Boruto, they don't like you saying anything negative about Boruto. The anime, but that's the one thing that they really like. But they are, they also have to open up to other point of views and try to figure out what what's wrong with the actual show and what, and what could possibly be better going forward into Boruto. And a, a lot of thing that people don't really understand is that a lot of people feel like the writers probably don't care about what reviewers and probably not YouTubers, but a lot of the critics think about their specific anime. And one thing I want to tell a lot of people is that content creators or just anime creators in general, they'll probably change a certain thing later on down the road because a lot of people are probably criticizing one yeah, aspect agree. of it. I agree. The criticism should be valid and it should be heard. You know? without, yeah. without criticism, there is no improvement, basically. So, True. Yeah, if you get episodes of um, almost nothing in it, anything of value in it, and we don't complain about it, we are going to keep getting that because criticism, whether negative or positive, is still feedback and that helps the creators make good decisions. Or like uh, some people like think that someone, like just because of record or like something that they did before, like, they think that whatever they say, like their opinion, like is superior to someone else. Like I, I disagree completely with that. Sorry to mention name. I, I actually uh, know, not personally, but I, I talked to him before, like for Neverworld. And I really uh, think when he said like Black Clover, like it's like a ripoff. And like now it's like, all around like uh, the fandom i don't really consider that way i've read a bit of the manga and i know that the uh, cycles mentioned this in the last podcast but just because he said it doesn't mean that it's facts right yeah, I mean, yeah. it's just an opinion like i said it's just people yeah. behind a mic you know expressing their opinions just yeah. because they say something doesn't mean it is factual you know what i'm saying unless yeah. they are giving you factual information about a certain show if you actually go by that then double for anime naruto is dead uh, boruto has the tensegan like according to his titles like he has more subscribers than me so he probably knows more than me right if you can go by that <laughs> But yeah, it's right. not like that like it doesn't matter how much subscribers you have like even if you leave like just a good comment like with zero subscribers like no videos and you can be like more correct than someone else like doesn't mean like uh just yeah, because of your numbers like your opinion is superior all of the opinions have something right but just because the majority of it is wrong doesn't mean that the entire opinion is wrong okay. that's my opinion so the main point of all of this um, and the hardships of content creators is for people to understand you should have your own mindset you know your life is not yours if you let someone tell you what to do kind of thing yeah so basically what i do is i encourage my viewers to um you know have a mind of their own just because i say something doesn't necessarily mean it is always true unless i'm stating facts or something then yeah that's facts right but if i state an opinion and you disagree with me just let me know in the comment section just don't be a dick about it because i will ban you if you yeah. actually do something stupid right but um i'm open to constructive criticism and all that kind of stuff all i'm saying is just just have a mind of your own whether it's being you know a movie good being good or bad or something like that just think for yourself go in, in watch a movie if it's good for you just say it's good don't you know let your decisions on whether a movie is good or bad be based on what someone else said like a critic or something like that you know what i'm saying so what do you think decisions. about like the uh scenario when like let's let's say like bora b makes a video about uh, something like so random and it has like a very clickbaity title but when he uh, expresses his opinion like his opinion like is actually quite like uh right like the opinion like everything he says in the video like it's very like facts right but uh, the title and the thumbnail is like quite clickbaity what do you think about those videos oh um me being me i'm honest i would just pull him up and say um, why are you clickbaiting and all that kind of stuff if he says i'm doing it because i just want to then that's fine you can do that you know what i'm saying but personally i like to stay with people who keep things professional uh i like people who you know um put in hard work instead of using clickbait in order to get views you know um that's that's why i'm willing to collaborate with people who are smaller that's why we, we have this podcast to you know um get people on here who actually put an effort in their videos and all that kind of stuff and i've seen a lot of youtubers who do that kind of stuff but um if someone clickbait i'm most very likely not to work with them because clickbait is just another way of gaining views when you know that you know your content is not good enough now i'm not saying that i get a lot of views with um, a lot of my stuff but the yeah. main thing is if you have passion for something right you will not clickbait okay because you want people to see it as it is um without any strings attached like a fake title or something like that you know what i'm saying Makes sense. um 
so yeah um if someone clickbaits i most likely will not work with them i will pull them up and tell them look you're clickbaiting you're doing this this and that if if you choose not to listen i'll just leave you alone and do your own thing and i just won't work with you it's really that simple you know what i'm saying it's kind of funny because yeah. uh, when we actually met i i think that i was in a stage when you actually didn't like my content but then i kind of improved and now you kind of like me i don't know <laughs> well yeah it's kind you of have improved your content you with really time have... like i said before it's all about the time it's not about like uh money or anything it's all about the time oh <laughs> well, <yeah. laughs> that's so cute thing. yeah right but with the clickbait thing i think it all comes down to accepting criticism as, as i said earlier you have to be open to accepting criticism about your own i i got told cycles a lot if i ever post something like over the top i want him to tell me on twitter like yo you gotta change the title or this is kind of clickbait yeah. Maybe like you should i, I always want video. to uh say to bora like the your most viewed video like that has like one point something million like oh, uh, that yeah. video is the title of that video is like mad mad like no fan <laughs> I, I really like you like as a but friend and as like past, uh, that's really the yeah, yeah, yeah right now he's doing good that, that's, that's like a, mad, bro. Yeah, that's like, like a year ago you right? literally passed the, the levels of double for anime like naruto got a no. Rish, he got, <laughs> no, 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 obviously that's, that's a pass right that's a pass like if he kept yeah. doing it and you know the majority of his videos was like that then i'll be like okay yeah. cool, i won't yeah, i won't I really you. you know work with this yeah. guy but he doesn't do that anymore like a lot of his the videos these days are really really good you know mm, the, the thing yeah. about that video and uh, I'll, I'll probably get like a lot of questions about that so when i first posted the video i had about like 20 views and i really i didn't really think of i really think of it much like four months later that's when the view that's when the video really started blowing up and at that point i'm like i don't know i don't know what to do like because the thing about it i didn't see it while it was blowing up I seen it when it already had like 900,000 views. I'm like, well, what can I do? <laughs> what can I do at that point? And the thing about it is that a lot of people probably think about it like um, the viewer, I mean, the YouTuber has to see it because of all the comments or, or all the all the views. And I don't really get notifications off of comments, things like that. At this yeah. point, it's like I already got a million views. Like, yeah, I, don't yeah. know. <laughs> what, what I mean, still, I it's, a, it's a great theory. Like when you think actually yeah. about it, I think I did a video similar to that, like um, covering the same points, like just kind of different. But I didn't really title that way. Like I just titled yeah. Naruto Secrets Power and not like, yeah, oh, I my God, that. Naruto gets the Rina Sharing. Yeah. You gotta... <laughs> I mean, we won the war against clickbait with uh, uh, double for anime. We, we don't need another double for anime. Like, come yeah, on. I feel oh, they are yeah he's a great youtuber when you think about it but still he, he has he, his problems like yeah. everyone I've, I've, yeah I've, true, I've true. His videos and you know he talks and makes sense it's just his titles and you know his yeah. thumbnails but it is what it is i'm not gonna really question about i mean he had a very big reputation in the community but the uh forever world drama really like killed his channel kind of true that was kind of a funny time <laughs> yeah. The final battle in terms of the anime wars or the anime YouTuber wars. Naruto against Sasuke. The final yeah. battle. So that's pretty much it. Now we okay, could talk we about the. Yeah, we could talk about against KSI, the biggest boxing match, the uh, the biggest like non-professional boxing match in history of like boxing matches. Mm -hmm. Not, I mean, not Jake Paul, but I mean Joe Weller against KSI. That was about. Uh, so basically, they had like drama for a while, and um, KSI even dropped a diss track on jo Joe Weller, basically saying, I fucked your crush or something like that. Oh, it was yeah. pretty funny. And uh, after that, uh, they had like complete drama, like KSI were being very cocky and things like that. And to three months later, they actually uh, settled this on a ring, and it was very intense because KSI wasn't really a boxer, like, he never had experience with boxing. But, J uh, like, Joe Weller was a professional, like, he, he went to the gym like years before he met even KSI, even before he started YouTube, right? Mm -hmm. So, KSI mm -hmm. trained like for five months on straight, and he actually managed somehow to win against Joe Weller by like amazingly, somehow, even though Joe Weller was actually injured. Personally, I watched KSI and like his group, the Simon. They are like the first YouTuber I ever watched, like about four years ago. I think I started watching them, and technically, they are like one of my favorite YouTubers. And you get what I mean? Yeah. The thing about me is, I never really followed the Joe Weller and KSI beef because during the time that was going on, there was like everything. There was like 
yeah. anime, well, not anime there's like youtube wars yeah it was rice gum versus team 10 yeah. it was a whole bunch of stuff it was banks at that point yeah it was a whole bunch of stuff and you guys probably hopefully you guys know who we're talking about there's just the vlogging community of youtube would you would you guys kind of would you guys say that's what they are not really like KSI is really gaming like uh, like Kim in words of Kimstar the famous Kimstar yeah, he's like yeah. one of the <laughs> biggest uh, entertainment of gaming history like personally I didn't enjoy FIFA like at the time but watching them actually made me enjoy FIFA and uh, in FIFA 15 FIFA 16 I was like a FIFA nerd at the time like mm. even this, no one knows this like ex exclusive for the podcast i actually used to have a, a like a small fifa channel that's how i started youtube for the first time for real yeah what, is it a different channel yes it's a different channel i deleted like afterwards oh you deleted it you deleted it. Oh, okay the videos well, yeah. for, yes i used to do face cam videos by the way so you oh, can see wow. my beautiful face in there <laughs> oh wow but yeah me and my perspective of the ksi thing i really i didn't really know about much about the joe weller thing but i kind of see i seen a fight definitely seen a fight of course i'm pretty sure everybody here's seen the yeah. fight i'm not sure about cycle cycles did you see the fight uh i don't really like even though <laughs> is cycles is really out of drama like he never like, gets even, involved even even though kids is like from the uk and all that kind of stuff like with me as a person, I, I'm I'm neutral on almost anything. Or, or oh, okay. Yeah. So like, even if my best friend or my family relative or something did something stupid, I'll tell them you fucked up, not the other guy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so yeah. with me, I I don't really look into that kind of stuff. Like, oh, YouTube beef is just it's just people acting stupid on the internet. In my opinion, you know, um, I know there's a right side and, you know, sometimes there's a wrong side, but I think a lot of it has to do with pride and people thinking that YouTube famous actually is something big when it's actually not. You know what I'm saying? Um, Basically, Cycles isn't for the culinary. Me and Lazy Kage were all for the culinary. We want to hear yeah. all the drama. I remember the you know? first thing that we ever thought about DMs with Bart, I was like, wait, you, you know, Rice Gum and uh, Face Bank's drama? I was like, yeah, yeah. bro. We started yeah, yeah, so that yeah, was pretty yeah. fun. Uh, yeah, the term of the KSI versus Joella. Jake Paul thing. Uh, oh, nah, yeah. Jake Paul, we're moving to Jake Paul Jake thing. Paul is, yeah, Jake hey, Paul, what? in my opinion, might be the most cringe YouTuber that ever exists. Like, if you think double <laughs> for anime is bad, just watch Jake Paul, bro. Like, he really cares to entertain his 12-year-old fanboys and fangirls just to get those merch mer merchandise money, same as his brother. And I think uh, I have respect for Logan Paul, even though after what he did, because really, if you think about it, he is actually cool in a sense, not what he did. No, he and dead things don't connect pretty well, in my opinion. Oh, but, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's that crazy. Is, yeah. That I can talk about definitely good to great yeah I, cycles maybe you remember i made the video about that i was so pissed and oh, I, yeah. a lot of people say you did it for the views not really i just did it just because i wanted to point out if you're subscribed yeah, to Logan Paul, people always unsubscribe. Talk accuse unsubscribe. Of things like people accuse me of being fake because i only interact with big youtubers but now here i have a podcast um set up to introduce other youtubers who are who don't even have subscribers yeah. close to me so you know i know cycles i had 100 subscribers okay i dm'd him on twitter he had no reason to reply to me, like no reason. And he replied to me. We set up a collab in my channel at the time, and we had like a friendship going on, even though he had no reason to do it. So if you say that Cycles is a fake, you either have a mental issue or you just a hater. <laughs> okay, basically. so uh, let's talk about um, is it Jake or Logan? I don't care. It's one yeah, of the, Jake, Jake Paul. Jake okay, Paul. Okay, so so when you look at a person, right, and I'm a very um observant person right i can determine a person's personality by their demeanor and how they do things within yeah. seconds right so from within seconds of looking at this guy right i don't i'm not saying i can i know 100 percent what you're about by you know looking at you for seconds but i can determine the baseline of what type of person you are you know from seconds and looking at you and the way you carry yourself and you know the way you do things and how you solve your problems so when i looked at jake paul right and you know logan paul and all the you know stupid stuff they do on the internet um why i don't justify any of their behavior is you can tell by just looking at them that these people are sociopaths right and yeah. sociopaths are people <laughs> sociopaths are people who um well lack on the ability to feel emotions basically well, no. Yeah, they they can you know experience uh, you know um, sympathy and empathy and all that kind of stuff, but they yeah. 
choose themselves over others okay so same example when it comes to happiness they will choose themselves over others most of the time you know what i'm saying um what they did you know um the whole apology thing about the suicide force thing i knew that he didn't care it was just for media attention right and yeah, straight after he course. decided that, to that's, take that's a like, dead rat you know to have a reputation of you know entertaining children that is fine I, I don't i don't mind that but you don't go to another country and do racist things like throw pokeballs at japanese people come on <laughs> that was funny like they're not pokemon like they are actual people and you know japanese yeah. people are in a completely different world in terms of culture you know what i'm saying like i yeah. Yeah. get very unfounded things. about this kind of stuff yeah yeah, yeah. and uh and the, the thing is after he apologized for you know uh, recording and making fun of a dead guy he decided to come back make his comeback by making a video about teasing a rat now a lot of people did not find this to be a big deal however yeah I did, i'm like uh yeah. oh no well see here's the I thing mean, here's the i thing. mean really when you think about it like it doesn't really matter right because it doesn't really affect youtube as a whole it affects youtube as a whole but in a way or another like it's just fun to watch two complete idiots just fuck up like i'm, I'm <laughs> from my perspective the dead body thing was disgusting but the uh, the the thing that he did afterwards like it was just funny seeing like how dumb it is like just funny um, in my opinion well I mean, after see all. here's the thing um i don't think it's still acceptable to go from a uh, you know recording a dead body apologizing and then going back to you know poking fun at another, <laughs> yeah. another dead thing it's basically proves right even though it's a rat and no one cares about a rat it basically proves that um he really didn't mean his apology about the whole death thing because how do you say okay i killed someone i apologize for it right and then i go back to you know killing someone but this time i'm doing it on gta laughing about it it's, it's like so that's just an analogy of basically or an example of what i'm trying to say is um, it doesn't make it right. It makes it seem like his apology uh, was fake. And also, the thing is, his target audience are children, right? So, you know, yeah. tasting dead rats and making it seem cool in front of children is not something you should do. I mean, does anyone, what? Uh, does everybody know who Mr. Rogers is? Uh, no. Uh, okay, so it's, it's like a TV show, some, some American guy who um, teaches children something like, say for example, like a kid show, imagine Dory exploring, tasing dead rats and saying, oh, it's good and trying to learn you, you know, teach you Spanish on a, Hey, hey, say, Captain. I'm poking, I'm, yeah, I'm, I get it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm poking <laughs> dead rats with a taser or something like, that's, you're entertaining kids, not adults, you know what I'm saying? The, the, the thing about Logan and Jake, I feel like, of course, Logan Paul still has kid fans that watch his video because his, his brother is Jake Paul. But Logan Paul says it all the time, like, he's not really trying to target under 12-year-old kids. Like, his, he feels like his demographic. That's a pure lie, fam. That's a I mean, pure lie. Like, come on, let's be honest. He like, feels I, personally... Personally, I watched like like 10 vlogs of them, or both of them at the time when they're popping up, and I was like, why do people like these guys? But really, yeah. if you think about it, if if you are like under the mm -hmm. age of like uh, 13, I don't think that you will enjoy that kind of stuff. Like, let's be honest, like the it's thing like about, very dumb. Look, the thing about Logan, I feel like his demographic will be a little bit older. Is the fact that Logan Paul makes a lot of a lot more, I should say, edgy videos, especially with females. Like he yeah, he has a lot of females in his videos, and he probably has them in bikinis, has them in the thumbnails, much more than Jake Paul ever does. And I feel like that probably drives his demographic up a little yeah, bit more. Okay. But in terms of doing all this edgy stuff in front of the kids, especially because it's not up to him what kind of demographic demographic he has, they still watch his videos. And I feel like that is definitely a problem so going you're saying, forward. You're saying it's not his fault that children might end up watching his videos? Well, Listen, actually, it's what? not his fault. Like, let's be honest. Like, yeah, when you, it really isn't. When you really, really think about it. Like, in, in my opinion, I think like if you were in his place, I mean, you will still do what you do, right? Because money, millions, like. Well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't necessarily tease that. Guys, things. just think about it. Just That's... think about it. It's been leaked that he actually makes ten million dollars out of his merchandise for one month. Just for <laughs> one month, ten million dollars. Like. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I feel like Logan Paul, as I said, it's like censoring the creator, like censoring the artist of his own work. As you guys said, he can't really monitor his demographic or make sure no kids watch it, watch what he makes. And because kids watch his stuff, he has to cut off a lot of the stuff that he would show to his regular demographic that demographic that he would want to watch his videos so it's kind of centering the artist putting the artist in a box and you kind of understand it on that standpoint but i feel like 
it's just it's just the name of the game it's being a youtuber he has to understand that he can't really control who watches his videos but the only real real excuse i have for well not excuse but the only thing i could really give logan paul a leeway for is the rat thing i didn't really think it was that serious but the dead body the suicide force yeah that was crazy but the the rat thing i don't know i feel like at that point it's like a witch hunt of course it's kind of edgy but at that point i mean it's a dead rat i mean like what he did was I not mean, nearly as bad as wasn't people bad, to be. the only problem that i have with it is because he uploaded that after what happened and with him knowing that he's gonna get criticism for that he still did it just because just because he's a savage right he's and a he's a man. <laughs> yeah <laughs> by the way Mar, do you actually dude. like ksi do you actually yeah, yeah. I, I, the thing, the thing about KSI, I didn't really know much of him. The only time I really started to watch his videos was, of course, the whole war popped off. What do you off. think about the iDubs uh, content? Golf? I just wanted to ask you this because probably I didn't get it. All right, just a, side, I just a side thing. I never really found his content really that good, but oh, the, no, but, I'm, yeah, no, I, I didn't. Obviously, and a lot of people, and a lot of people might not like, and a lot of people might, might not like me for saying that. It's just I didn't find iDubs funny. iDubs has a real dry sense of humor. Yeah, I, I can relate to his like humor <laughs> thing. Yeah, it's it's very like edgy. Like only a couple of people you like. When he said like in his diss track, flex, flex, flex. When you got a personality, yeah. replace it with a role. That's like very, very like edgy. Like oh, not a lot of people will like like his humor, but it's like subjective. Yeah, it's a dry sense of humor. It's just that it's that pretty. It's just that pretty much. But the content cops that iDubs create. There's kind of like a standard of every single iDubs content cop that he makes. It's always very funny. Well, the, the dry comedy thing, which again, I don't really find funny, but they're always put together well. A lot of exposed things that a lot of people probably didn't know. And of course, the Leafy one was good. The Kim Star one was good. And pretty much all the other ones were good. Those are the only two that I've really seen. And I've seen some other iDubs videos. I didn't really find them funny. Again, it's like the dry comedy. I didn't really don't really find them funny. But uh, the with the rice gum thing, he just put out like a whole bunch of things that everybody else knew. You know, with Leafy, it was a whole bunch of stuff that no one knew. The Keem thing, people knew it, but it was buried deep into like 2009, 2010. So it was kind of like new yeah, information yeah. for a lot of people. But with, with rice gum, he's only been on YouTube for like, at that point, it was like a year, a year and a half. Yeah, everybody yeah. already knew, everybody already accepted it. So it was like, all right. Wait, can I ask you guys a question? Yeah. Mm. Like, what um, entertains you about this? What, what I mean, I about iDubs, really, he's like, I don't know, probably you know Cycles uh, Filthy Frank. Um, I've heard about him. <laughs> yeah, so he's like good friends with him and they have like the same type yeah. of comedy. Like, uh, I, I don't really think that it's funny, like, yeah. talking, like gay people are saying that he's gay, but he's not, or saying the N word, like very controversial stuff. Like, but he says yeah. it just and he gets a pass for it. That's why, like, he's like a god of YouTube in a way. I mean, yeah, not I, everyone I, agrees with that, but wait, it's the best. Yeah, I, I, dubs. I dubs, yes. He says the M word. He says he's a he's gay, but he's not really gay, and he things like that. And um, he really gets a pass for it because of the type of comedy he makes. And yeah, I think yeah. that makes him very unique compared to other people who make like that kind of comedy. When you think about it, he really is smart with his moves because he really like hides out for half a year, and he makes like random videos that have nothing to do with anything, like unboxing videos, and he just yeah. drops a content cop like out of nowhere and he gets like about two million subscribers for like a month and then he yeah. goes hiding like for another year and he does this years after years and that's why he's like really good at his stuff the thing with i dubs and especially talking about the rice gum thing i know we're like jumping back and forth but with the rice gum thing i kind of see i dubs content cop because i hold it at that high of a standard i see it as diss tracks and i'm not talking about the regular diss the diss tracks that we see youtubers make like yeah. of course rice gum puts out a diss track like once every month they, i don't see it like that i see it as like a diss track that drake would make or a diss track that meek mill would make and rice gum told no, really I, it's, it's yeah. very dumb comparing drake and meek mill drama to some uh, like youtube drama like do you no, really think that the, th the thing is, is like uh, yeah i guess the, right. no the thing is idubs prides himself on art and and his content that's why he yeah. doesn't upload a lot it's his content you know so yeah. i feel like for that i feel like it's 
it should be you know it's a diss same standard as like a diss track and rice gum and iDubs they had like a they had like a tiny bit of beef before i wouldn't call it a beef but rice gum said he wanted iDub, iDubs to drop a diss track on him or not a diss track a content, a content cop on him yeah, yeah. Like a year. and it was like yeah like a year earlier we and already like, knew that the content copies was it was like coming but we never knew like when will he yeah. drop like, out of yeah. nowhere a year later like he just boom drops to the content cop that was unexpected yeah. like yeah exactly and for idubs to reply like a year later imagine if your favorite rapper disses someone and drops a diss track on them and then a year later he finally comes back and drops a reply diss track like ah, i'm not sure you know <laughs> it's kind of funny because uh Michael found found this like quite stupid. Probably he probably yeah he finds it like, real stupid. He's not with I mean, all the when you think, like uh, technically. Uh, I, uh, I personally like um the only person I look up to is myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, uh, I, I, selfish. Like, no, I'm joking. No, no, it's not that. It's not that. Okay, um, it's basically like I i respect a lot of things in life right and um, mm. i look past a lot of the stupidity that humans come up with just to entertain themselves when they are just trapped yeah. in this big ball of freaking earth and water right so this yeah. all this this celebrity stuff and all that kind of stuff it's just humans just finding ways to entertain themselves because we are all trapped on this planet there is nothing oh. to do so we just end up entertaining each other and to be honest with you i will say i will admit i am a quite immature person and i'm not easily entertained by stupidity so yeah. you know like if i see shit like this right i don't really care about someone else's beef because at the end of the day like i got my own problems to you know sort out and all that kind of stuff and that's why i ask you uh, like why are you entertained by this because yes, really I, much more, like, i do struggle to me and like, Laura, like, of... <laughs> is mature. all right let, let me let me try to break it down you know let me try to break it down you have certain people that you watch for entertainment whether it be whether it be anime entertainment whether it be regular entertainment funny wait, stuff wait comedy. wait wait cycles mm -hmm. you watch uh battle raps like the the show like best battle raps or what what is it called like i, I forgot the name what like the the rap show that it's on youtube like uh, donald trump against hillary clinton they, they made all like, oh, that stuff yeah it's quite yeah. creative yeah you found that funny and you don't like rice gum I never heard Rice Gum um, spit anything, and also <laughs> okay, the reason fair. why I watch, um, I listen to epic rap battle of history, right, is what yeah. you're talking about, it's because it's, it's yeah. quite creative, like, I was interested in history, so, you know, um, seeing them put the facts there and, you know, convert them into insults is kind of funny, but, yeah, you know, yeah. when we have one person you know beefing the other because of ignorance and um um uh, the, the coonery feel, yeah coonery there it goes that's the best time. um just just it's just pure coonery and to be honest with you a lot of youtubers <laughs> have a lot of pride right and then yeah. you know they start beef over pride and to me it's it's just stupid why what's the point i feel like if jake paul and ksi do fight if they square off all the other BS they're talking about right now with the Deji Comedy Shorts Gamer stuff. I feel like that and I feel like that moment or that specific YouTube live stream would probably be the biggest live stream in YouTube. No, I, I feel like the it'll probably one have... isn't like the one when Elon Musk dropped like the spaceship thing or Yeah, that that's that's the one right now. And I feel, I think that yeah. had what about three million concurrent two, viewers. Two point something, something like yeah. That. Yeah, two point something. Yeah. I feel like a Jake Paul versus a KSI would probably have like five million concurrent viewers. Probably, that's probably. Being generous. That's yeah. just being generous. So I feel like it could it could help YouTube, or from that standpoint. Now, yeah. the, on the fan standpoint, of course, no one really likes Jake Paul. If you watch WWE, I'm pretty sure a lot of fans out there probably watch WWE. Yeah. You have the bad guy, and then you have the good guy. KSI is of course going to be paying like the good guy. And yeah, Jake but the fans, because still, guy. even even if we don't consider them like as mature people even the 12 year old uh, people like they still have an opinion and they still think that jake paul is number yeah. one that bad on those haters yeah that. so everybody <laughs> has a good guy and a bad guy and it all yeah. it all comes back to entertainment you being entertained and of course seeing someone or seeing an entertainer that that you watch doing a different thing and another different thing them coming together and doing a collab that's one thing 
But if they, if they come together and they fight, that's a whole other thing. Or if one drops a diss track on the other, that's a whole other thing. It's like now it's beef. Now cycles might not see it, but cycles. I want I want you to I want to ask you something. Think about your favorite two actors. Imagine if they actually have a boxing match. No, just pure fun. That would be something that you would probably want to watch, right? Nope. <laughs> wow. <laughs> just. I mean, Cycles is pretty unique. Like he's just like my friend in real, my best friend in real life. He's just like Cycles. He doesn't get entertained by anything specifically. Like he's said, like yes. so like said, mature. Like I'm, like, I'm, a, yeah. I'm difficult to impress when it comes to storytelling or anything else. Like um, in life, like I've been through things to the point where it makes me do two things automatically in my in my head, right? So I yeah. decide what I, um, you know, waste my time on and all that kind of stuff. And um, I decide two things, whether that thing or that I'm about to expose myself to is important or not. If it is important, then fine. If it is not important, then I just don't bother with it. And I don't see the, the point of like, you know, um, people fighting, even though they are like my favorite actors or something like that. Like I don't, I don't worship actors to that degree. Like I would have John um, Boyega, right? You you guys know John Boyega, right? Like he yeah. gave me advice and all that kind of stuff, and like I would see him around and yeah. stuff. But it, I don't go up to him and start drooling and asking for autographs and all that kind of stuff. Like he can sit next to me, I mm. won't even say nothing to him. Like I don't, like I know if you actually get to talk to these people and understand what it's like being famous and out there they are just like me and you, you know what it's, I'm it's like you're looking at it in a totally different way like we understand that but it's just the collaborations <laughs> between two different entertainers that you watch yeah, and you yeah. follow it could possibly be something great and especially in the terms of a boxing match or a fight period it's a good guy a bad guy everybody kind of gets riled up yeah, from this yeah. and also the anticipation of course it'll probably be the biggest thing and of course, if they start now, it'll probably happen in the summer. And then you know that's when YouTube is booming. It'll probably be the biggest thing that happened in the YouTube period. I well, feel like course, that could just be a I, I, think, I think the problem is that I, I just don't see fun in conflict. I, I don't thrive or get any dopamine increase from seeing conflict. Conflict doesn't excite me. I see what you mean. Uh -huh. All right, so getting off of the KSI and Jake Paul drama, I'll probably, we're probably not going to talk about that any further. We're going to be basically talking about movies and our favorite movies. And honestly, I feel like my favorite movie, I told Cyclops before, I don't really watch like a lot of movies. And I feel like my favorite movie is Battleship. A lot of you guys probably didn't see it or a lot of you guys probably did see it. If you're from the U.S., it stars Rihanna and a lot more other actors. But that's pretty much my favorite movie. Have you guys seen it? And uh, no. No, not really. Oh, wow. Okay. I highly recommend you guys watch Okay, I will look it out. I will look it out. How about you, Sai? Tell us about your favorite movie, bro. I don't have a favorite movie or favorite anything. I just have a select of things that I prefer over others. So, um, <laughs> <Psychos> <laughs> amateur stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I would say Pacific Rim is good. I would say mm -hmm. um, Batman v Superman is good, even though people are going to say, well, it's not. You what? Know. You like. You like. I think okay. it's good. The okay. score is good. The score is good. Um, the story yeah. may not be perfect, but overall, um, I, I think it's okay. There are, you know, it has problems, but overall, in terms of my own mindset and ignoring other people's criticism, I kind of enjoyed it. So I care about my enjoyment compared to what people think. I don't care what anyone else thinks yeah, about yeah. that. It's just all right. Real quick, real quick, because we talked about this a little bit before the podcast. So, because I want to ask you a question: Which do you prefer? Do you prefer DC or Marvel? Um, personally, DC. to me, personally, personally, okay, to me, um, it doesn't matter. They they both have <laughs> they both offer they both offer um you know different sides of things. Like DC is dark, right, and Marvel is more you know comedic, funny, and you know light hearted kind of thing. So it, it's it's like they're both. A, a kind of necessary thing to create balance kind of thing so one is too too dark and or dark and then the, the other side is light kind mm, of thing yeah. so you know mm. um, i'm in the middle where i like both i don't care who's what and you know which superhero yeah. is better than we, what we i just care about the entertainment and people these days are so focused on bandwagoning and or you know you know getting together and choosing a side and it's always side via side but if you stop following the crowd and you know think for yourself you will actually start enjoying life more because mm -hmm. then you know you pick what you want and not based on what someone wants so when it comes to dc and marvel mm -hmm. i like both i don't hate all the superheroes yeah, all, you I, know feel what you, I feel so 
DC right, against right. Marvel, in my opinion, I think uh, DC has better characters and Marvel has more entertaining scenes. The the bo- uh, the fighting scenes, I think they are comparably okay. And about the, my favorite movie thing, uh, Cycles has probably seen this movie. Uh, it's like the Batman trilogy movies. It's perfectly good. But my favorite one is The Dark Knight, the 2008 version when the Joker is like the villain. And that's my favorite movie of all time. Mm-hmm. Cycles, yeah, yeah, you've seen that, right? Dark Knights. Yeah, yeah, the I've Heath Ledger that. performances. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, you, everyone has seen that, of course. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Now, now the reason why I asked Cycle first about the the Marvel versus DC is one, obviously, he's an actor, so he's a, so he's into the, the the entertainment business, and that on that standpoint, also, he's not a stan or not, he's not a fan of either one. So I felt like he'll probably give me a, a stable answer. And of course, Lazy gave yeah. him his answer, a, re, a very diplomatic answer. You know, I think yeah. it's good. I don't I'm more than a fan, it. like not like I, I don't I don't say from the perspective of an actor because I don't have like a lot of experience on that stuff. But I mm. really feel like in a, in a like on a community base, I think the cycles is really is like tell like proving himself that he might be like the most mature Boruto YouTuber, like I especially what what he showed in this podcast. Like I, 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 my respect from him is just going like up and up and up. Yeah, he probably is. I'm, I'm more of the, I'm more for the coonery. Yeah, <laughs> I'll say more yeah, for the like the, the, So, any final words? Subscribe to Cycles twice. Uh, <laughs> final words, I'll say subscribe to Lazy Kage because um, he does some, you know, um, Naruto and Boruto content. And for those people who are on Barbie's channel who like that kind of stuff, I'd say go subscribe to him. <laughs> Since none of you guys said it, I recommend <laughs> subscribe to Barbie, you know, <laughs> my channel. <laughs> well, of course, you, not uh, not all the viewers subscribe to me, but just tell you guys we're doing I mean, I'm sure that no one will watch a one hour podcast of just us talking and that they're not subscribed. Like, come on, let's be honest. I mean, you never know, but... <laughs> <laughs> But just to tell you guys, Lazy Kage's to his channel will be in the description below. I highly recommend you guys go subscribe to him. He covers a whole bunch of stuff. From Dragon Ball, Boruto, My Hero Academia, multiple more animes. Also, we're doing this podcast probably, probably a lot more. We're going to have a lot more guests on here. It's not necessarily going to be just me and Cycles as it was last time. And of course, if you, if you guys didn't see the last podcast, I recommend you, go, you guys go watch that. That'll be in the description below as well. But as you guys know, it's been your boy Barbie. It's been your boy Cycles. It's been your boy Lazy Kage. And we out. Yeah, guys. See ya.